Hey everyone, today I'm going to do another Darktable video. This time I'm going to um, run through some of the masking options that Darktable provides. You can see that I've been working on this um, phone box here that's uh, in one of these local uh, Oxford colleges. So I'm just going to go through and show you what I've been doing. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, go back to the original by clicking on the base curve and compressing the history stacks. This is the original image that I, that I took. You can see that it's in color. Now what I want to do is uh, just go through one of those simple kind of artistic effects that people like to do, which is bring out just a single element in color and let everybody, everything else um, go into black and white. You can see that this image is almost already a bit like that. I mean, we've just got this little green area here and this little green area here. Otherwise, um, you know, most of the color in the image is already this phone box. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to make Everything else in the image go black and white except for the red in the phone box. So to do that, I'm going to use the basic monochrome module. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to make things black and white in Darktable, and I'll go over that in a separate video. But first, the first things first, I'm going to start off with a parametric mask just to show you how they work. Now, of course, as always, it's great to um, go and look at the uh, manual for Darktable. There's a lot more information in there that I'm going to cover now, but you know. Hopefully this will be a little bit more intuitive. So essentially the parametric mask is, is a global mask that affects the whole image, um, unlike uh, the drawn masks, which are like a local mask, as in you draw around a local small part of the image. With a parametric mask, it affects the whole image based on um, some property of uh, the pixels. So it works on a pixel level. Um, so let's say I could select uh, just pixels that are a certain color or pixels that are a certain brightness all of those sorts of things so we have we have the lab color space here the the uh, luma and then the a and the b channels um, we also have the chroma channel here and we've got the hue in this final one and that's the one i'm going to use today because hue essentially means well what color is the thing so i'm going to select just the red stuff so i'm going to use this uh, eyedropper here and i'm going to select the area that I want uh, to remain color, and you can see that this line has appeared here on the uh, input slider. Now the difference between the input and the output is simply that this is the pixel values as they come into the module, and then once they get transformed by the module, this is the pixel values coming out. I normally use the input, it's much more, it's much easier, but uh, I'm sure that there are some advanced uses for the output. So now the question is, well, what does all of this mean? What are these four um, sliders here? And essentially what you're doing is you're drawing an area in the color space that you want uh, to be masked. So I'm just going to turn on the mask now. You can see that the whole image just went yellow. What that means is that the module, in this case the monochrome module, is applying to the whole image fully. So if you can see if I turn it off, the whole image is grayscale. Okay, so what we want to do then is we want to uh, exclude some of the image uh, from that being turned grayscale. So what I want to do is, so currently everything in between these two sets of sliders is included, but I want to exclude the red stuff. So I'm just going to drag the sliders to the right of the red. And you can see that as soon as I do that, the red pixels pop right out. So now if I turn off the... Uh, the mask, we can see the image. So we've got some red spots here and we've got the red of the phone box. Now unfortunately uh, we can see that there's a bit of grey here at the top and that's because, well, um, let me see, can I drag it? Yeah, okay, so I can drag it to the left. So now what we're including essentially is just the colours that are in here and in here. Everything else is, well, included in the mask. So uh, the other thing you can do is you can flip the polarity of this. So I've now made the uh, phone box black and white and everything else color. So you can see that if I turn on this, this mask, you can see that the yellow areas are the areas that are being, let me get this right. The yellow areas are the areas that are being uh, affected by the plugin. Okay, so now I've got my uh, telephone box to be you know, red, but there's some red in these other parts of the image. So what I'd like to be able to do now is 
well, let me just fiddle with this a little bit and just finish it off because um, if I show you the pixel values here, we can see we're getting quite the the pixels are either fully included or, or fully excluded. But what I want to do is I want to have it a bit smoother. So you can see that if I drag this along, you can see that the uh, some of the pixels are partially included. So I'm just I just like to have it a little bit smoother. Okay, let me turn that back off. All right. So we can see now that yeah, we're almost at at, the, at our destination. So what I want to do now. So I want to combine uh, a drawn mask with this parametric mask. So essentially what I want to be able to do is I want to say, well, apply the parametric mask. Um, and what you'll see is that it's applied to the wall behind and it's applied to the phone and all this kind of stuff. But I want to mask off just the phone box part as well. And I can do that, you know, so I can say exclude this the red here. I want this to become black and white as well because I just want the telephone box. And I can do that by using a drawn and parametric mask. And what this is is a combination of a drawn mask and a parametric mask. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to... Um, it's a little unintuitive how to combine these. And they're done with these um, mathematical operators here in the, in the combine masks drop-down. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to drop a circle over here. Okay, so now we can see that with this circle... Only the areas that are both within the circle and would have been, let me right click on this to get rid of it. See how the, the, this is uh, included by the parametric mask and by the drawn mask. But that's not precisely what I want. In this case, I want, um, so let me get rid of this again and just show you. In this case, I want to do sort of the opposite. I want to include the things that are not masked by the parametric mask, as in the red stuff, and within the drawn mask. So let's. what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to play with the polarity on these. So there's a polarity uh, selector on here. You can see if I click that, it's, it's, it inverts. You know, the color is now outside the phone box, and now it's within the phone box. But we can use... The exclusive and see how we got inverted down the bottom here well let me just demonstrate if i click this to make it negative and then i use an inverted i get back to the same result so now look at that if i use exclusive and inverted then i get the result that i want and essentially i just play with these until i get the result that i want um, the manual gives you a bit more information on this. I suggest, again, that you check it out. Okay, so cool. I'm going to right-click on this to get rid of this. What I want to do now is I just want to draw a selection around just the telephone box, and that's going to exclude these flowers and exclude this sign. So let's go do it. I'm just left-clicking uh, here to add control points, and I'm just going to adjust them afterwards. So I'm just going to add a few down the bottom here to keep things straight. And a few along the side here. Okay, so now I've got all the control points I want, and I'm just going to right-click to finish. So now we can see that this line here is now gone black and white. This flower's gone black and white. Perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to look. So I'm just going to now zoom in by using the mouse wheel to fine-tune what I want to do. Now, I don't need to be too accurate here unless um, the pixels are included by the parametric mask. So I need to be a little bit careful here. If I drag this out, see how the sign will start to come back in. So I'll just pull that in nice. I'm just going to reduce the size. I'm, I'm selecting the emu, the area between, see how it's the, uh, the dotted line on the edge? This is the feathering. See how that is a, a gradient now? So I'm just going to um, make that smaller by just mouse wheel, uh, Mousing over and then mouse wheeling up to make it smaller. And I'm just going to make it quite small because I want to be pretty accurate. You'll see here that I need to be quite accurate on the right hand side because we can see that the parametric mask is including some pixels here. So I'm just going to drag that back over. Okay, so let's just go around and look at the edges uh, where I think 
Um, I can control click here to add another control point and I can pull that in if I want to control click pull that in you can see that there's also these sliders here if I click on one of these control points I can um, do the slider and that affects see how that affects it affects kind of the strength of uh, how the control point affects the line around it okay so let's do that there we don't need to be too careful along the top here because the outside is pretty excluded there's a little bit there that I want to exclude just be a little bit careful with that um, otherwise we're looking pretty good up here yeah that looks quite good down the down the edge of the door there so I'm just going to drag down just look around make sure that it's all as I was looking for so that's my completed image um i might go and do a few other things like well why don't we play with the exposure a little bit um i wouldn't mind the black and white parts of the image being made darker and leaving the exposure of the telephone box alone so let me see if i can use a drawn uh let's just use the drawn mask for from before so I can see that in our, my mask manager now I've got a bunch of uh, shapes that I've used before so I can actually go and I can select those let's have a look at this group monochrome that's the opposite of what I want so now perhaps let's toggle the polarity okay so that's looking sort of vaguely all right obviously I'm going to need to now adjust uh, the edges of this to sort that out and I'm going to probably just make this all a lot less um, overdone if you like so let's have it somewhere around here let's zoom in on this edge and sort this out let's turn on the mask by clicking on this button here uh, let's click on here and pull this in now you'll see here that this makes the the corner a lot more abrupt which is precisely what I want and I'm going to control click here on the line to add another another thing to pull this in closer to the edge and I'm just going to blend the uh, exposure now closer into the phone box so that we don't get an obvious sort of halo effect which is what I'm trying to avoid so I'm, again I'm going to make using the mouse wheel I'm going to make the, whoops, we just zoomed a bit there, but uh, I'm going to make the transition not um, very big. So let me zoom back out. Let's have a look here. Let me turn this off so that we can see what the image is looking like. It's a little bit more here to fix up and probably a bit over there on the door as well. So let's turn the mask back on by clicking this button here. Uh, maybe control click, drag that in pull this up here all right that's looking pretty good I'll probably drag this in here just to get things whoops fortunately I don't think there is an undo that I know of no control Z so we just need to sort that back out again by dragging it up yep it's pretty good so anyway uh, I'm going to continue fine-tuning this mask I'll control click in here to add another thing another control point drag these in so that we get more uh, what we want and I might fast forward the rest Okay, so that's looking quite nice now. And so now I can just uh, fill with my black point and my exposure, and this is going to be separate again to the telephone box because it's masked off. So I like, like that to be quite contrasty, so I'm just going to push the blacks up nice and high so we get quite a nice dramatic image. Yeah, that's probably a little over the top. All right, so now let's uh, close this off and have a look at my final image. Okay, so there it is. So that's just a bit of an intro to um, 
the various different uh, masking options, the drawn masks and the parametric masks. Um, obviously, there's a bunch more tools here that form part of the drawn masks, so we can um, we can uh, cover some uh, brushes and some circles and ellipses and so forth in some future videos. Okay, hope you enjoy that, guys. Uh, it's good to be back. See you later.